Hi, here's the latest tip from Bellarmine's videos. I've been doing this time, I've been trying to get the tire off the back of my tra garden tractor. As you can see, I got it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you how I managed to get it off. I never thought it would be such a huge problem getting the tires off these garden tractors. When I looked online and read about the problems people have with destroying their transmissions and having to toss the axle, cut the axles off, I couldn't believe it. I never thought that would be such a huge problem. And these John Deere 165 Hydros are no exception. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I did to get this off. I use what you need. You need two good stout 2x4s, about the size of your tire. A real hefty transport tow chain. This one I've seen it actually I've seen it have real strenuous service tugging pickup trucks around like ping pong balls, I'm not kidding. So this is tried and true. A socket about the size of your shaft. And nice hefty bobble jack. This one this is a three-ton one. It just couldn't quite cut it. I had to use this one. Unbelievably. Eh? And these things sometimes they don't work sideways. This one. It has an arrow, it has to be mounted, it has to be like this. This one, it had started running out of fluid when it was extended a certain amount. And uh, I had to unscrew this and push the piston back in so it had enough fluid left when it was on its side. Anyway, unfortunately I didn't take a video of this when I was doing it. I should have. But what I'm going to do is if you stay tuned, I'm going to set it all back up so you see exactly what I did. And I hope this helps someone. As you can see here, I've been... I actually got it off yesterday, so I've been cleaning the shaft and the wheel. The wheel's all nice and clean, and the inside's de-rusted, sanded. And as for this, what I do, I just start the engine, put it in gear, and I just wrap this around it and hold it there, going back and forth as it's running. And as you see, it does a nice job. Here's the old, and here's the new. And that almost looks brand new. And when I'm done, I'm going to grease it up real good with some nice axle grease, and I shouldn't have this problem again, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so. Stay tuned, I'll be back in a minute and you'll see how I did this. There you go. That's how I did it. And it works pretty good. See, I just put the socket there, right against the axle. It's about this, it's a little small on the axle so the wheel can come off. You probably don't need to do this when you first begin because the axle will be sticking out a little bit. So you can just put the jack right on the shaft to begin with. Make it a little simpler. Anyway big jack and the chain goes around twice to the back across these two boards. Nice sturdy 2 by 4s One of them almost split on me, but I managed to do it so they were strong enough. If you got anything better, or if you got space enough for a 4 by 4 by all means do that instead. So I hooked it around here and then I wrapped it around a few times. I would wrap this all around over and over, keep it all s snug and tight and so this doesn't fling around just in case. And you gotta keep this centered under the jack. So this works. Credit for this idea goes to the My Tractor Forum, a poster called JDCCE Tech. T E C H. So if you see this JDCC, thanks a bunch for the idea. It works great. But, as I say, be very, what I just want to mention, be very careful. You make sure everything is stable and square and straight. Because with the amount of force here, if something goes cockeyed and twists, it could have some disastrous results with your arm or something. So make sure everything is straight. I did this half a dozen times on and off with never a problem. Just be careful. Just stay away from it when you're doing it. For example, right now it's loose, so it's not going to do anything. It's just going to slide off. I'm saying just stay away from it and try and hold the handle gingerly so if something does happen it just it doesn't do something bad. Disclaimer. Anyway, you see the jack coming out and it's pulling the wheel off. It's easy as pie because right now it's loose of course. That's how I did it. This one used a so-called woodruff key instead of the straight key, which I suspect made it worse. I think the straight key would actually be easier. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, that's how I did it. And, 
I'll explain to you how I did it. Is uh, oh yeah, so this works right. You should not need this. You should not have no beauty with this. Is there's no torch, so you don't have to worry about your tire blowing up because you get the rim overheated. I've seen some horror stories for some reason. No torch. You don't have to bang the transmission to bits and all the forces between the wheel and the axle. So the worst thing that'll happen is you'll bend your rim. That's the worst that'll happen here. Transmission safe. So I didn't need this to get the tire off. I need this to get the tire back on. I'll explain. First time I did this, I pumped it up and the tire budged and came out about a quarter inch till it was flush with the shaft. I thought, great, getting it to move is 90% of the job. Oh no. After it moved, it seemed to be stuck real good. I tried six times and it still wouldn't budge. I was ready to give up. So then I decided to try giving a few pounds with the hammer and putting the tire back, putting the wheel back on the shaft, pushing it back in. Which I did, and I finally got back in after pounding on it a bit. Not too hard, because you're pounding on your transmission and break your ring, break your snap ring. So I was careful not to pound too hard. That's what the bigger socket is for. I use this and a piece of wood to pound on the um, hub and push the wheel back in. Once I got it back in, then I set this up and pulled it back out. Crick, 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 bang, stuck. So then I did a shortcut. I put the big socket in between and hammered the jack and pushed it, pushed the wheel back on. Then I put the small socket and pulled it out. Did that about four times. Finally, pop, it came off. Unbelievable. I'm going to grease this puppy up so good it'll slide off the tip of your finger next time I take it off. Anyway, this works. Just be careful. When I get back to the house I'll show you one other method that seems to be a real last ditch effort. Because the beauty of this is you don't have to damage your rim either. No drilling or welding or anything. But if this doesn't even work, one guy came up with last ditch effort. Drill a hole, got a half inch hole right near the hub. Get a hack saw, like a sawzall, put it through the hole to near the other side and saw a slot right in the hub, right down to the axle. He says do it over the keyway, that way you won't cut anything. I suppose that's a good idea, maybe, or do it somewhere else. Not sure, but you don't want to saw your transmission and you don't want to saw the shaft too much. Anyway, the idea being with a slot all the way along the, the hub, you can get oil in there and a cold chisel and uh, bash it and it's like relieve the tension and spread it apart a bit and then you can get the wheel off. And the good part of that is you also you can still use your wheel later. So what if it's got a slit in it? You're not going 60 miles an hour. It'll probably last outlast the rest of the tractor anyway. Big deal. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed that. Hope this helps someone. Leave lots of comments if you have any questions with your success stories and your failure stories. Hope they don't get too many of those. <laughs> Hope this helps and thanks for watching. See you later. Hello again. Here's the short little addendum I said I'd do about the uh, alternative last ditch method of getting the wheel off when I said earlier today. Yeah, this is this forum I got all my tips from. My tractor forum com. Lawn and Garden Tractors by Brand John Deere Forum. The topic rusted on wheel. Seven pages of tips, giggles, and madness. Unbelievable. Seven pages. Anyway, there's this method. You see? Here's a bigger picture. You see? Just drill a half inch hole here. Use a sawzall and saw right into the hub, wheel hub. So he says over the keyway so you don't uh, cut the axle too much. If you're careful you won't cut the axle at all and then you get a cold chisel and some oil in there and leave the tension of the hub on the rust and hammer the chisel into the crack and into the slot, open it up and it should come off. No, still no torch required. I think I can imagine that would probably work every time. And plus you can even reuse the wheel afterwards. So what if it's got a split in it? Big deal probably outlast the tractor anyway. <laughs> I'd recommend doing this with the wheel on the ground so that we don't pound the transmission to bits when you're pounding with a cold chisel. Anyway, that should probably work if my if the uh, 20 ton jack method doesn't work. 
here's where I got the twenty ton jack from this JDCCE tech there and he brings up a good point here I forgot to mention don't forget the PV blaster first time I got the wheel to budge and then when I was pushing and pulling over days afterwards I was soaking it with this stuff PV blaster it works good stuff it's really let me down it's fun the way it foams up when you're spraying it into it makes you feel like you're doing something Remember when you feel like beating the bits out of the transmission, remember, here's a picture I found. You don't want to wreck this. <laughs> this is a gear drive transmission. You don't want to get your shaft in, you don't want to bang on all this and bust all the rings and everything. Look, the owner of this found out the hard way, unfortunately. Expensive. Bye bye. Anyway. One other tip I got for you related to these lawn tractors. If you have, find you got a problem sometimes with it not starting where you turn the key and the, the starter only just keeps clicking, you have to keep turning the key over and over and over. I found that the starter solenoid is not getting enough voltage. You have to put in a relay to feed direct battery voltage to the starter solenoid and that'll fix it. John Deere even made a kit for it, can you believe it? It's not just John Deere tractors, it's any garden tractor. I might make a movie of that later showing what I did. It's pretty simple. If you know how to wire up a relay and do it in 15 minutes, and then it'll start and crank every time you turn the key. Check my other movies to see if I post it up soon. Also, be sure to check them out for all, all, all my other toys and stuff and goodies and everything. Chevy Suburban, six point, I love 6.2 diesels. And boats and snowmobiles, piano playing by yours truly, all sorts of stuff. If you, I love vintage Johnson Evernote motors too. I got all the brochures from them from 1905 or so to 2000-odd right on my hard drive. If you want some, give me a year of your motor and I'll send you one. That's PDF. Makes for real fun reading. 1959. Look at this. First of the white style after the old red. Great stuff. Yeah. Accessories leaflet on all the Vintage Johnson electric start kit, all sorts of stuff, amazing. So be sure to check that out. Hope you enjoyed. Oh yeah, my wallpaper. Justify. 2018 Triple Crown winner. Congratulations, Justify. I like horses too. Try to keep track of them. What's going on? Just this picture of them looks a lot like Manowar. Pretty interesting. Big red. <laughs> well, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps somebody. And take care and see you next time.